here it is time for story time. So we are back with Amy Blyford to the Enchanted Wood. We are on chapter 14 called The Funny Old Saucepan Man. This sounds like it's going to be a funny chapter. Shall we see what happens? Let's go. I don't think he's at all dangerous, said Franny. He has quite a kind face. Let's tap at the window, said Beth. So she tapped. But the saucepan man took no notice. He just went on dancing away, crashing his saucepans together. Joe tapped loudly. The saucepan man caught sight of him at the window and looked most astonished. He stopped dancing and went to the door. Come in and dance, he said. Oh, no, thank you, said Joe. We've just come to ask you for tea. Ask me for a bit, said the saucepan man, looking surprised. I'm so sorry, but I don't like bees, only saucepans. Not bees, said Joe, to ask you out to tea. But I don't want to go to the sea, said the saucepan man. I don't like the water at all. Never did. Very kind of you, I'm sure, but I hate the sea. Not the sea, but tea, 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 cried Joe. Oh, tea, said the saucepan man. Well, why didn't you say that before? Then I would have understood. I did say that before, said poor Joe. What? Shut the door, said the saucepan man. Certainly, if you want to, give it a push. He can't hear well, said Franny. He must be deaf. No, I'm not said the saucepan man, hearing perfectly all of a sudden. Not a bit deaf, only sometimes when my saucepans have been crashing round me rather a lot, I get noises in my ears afterwards, but I'm not deaf. I'm glad of that, said Joe politely. Cat? No, I haven't got a cat, said the saucepan man, looking all around. Did you see what? I didn't say anything about a cat, said Joe patiently. You did, I heard you, said the saucepan man. I don't encourage cats, I keep mice instead. I shall look for that cat. And then, with his saucepan clanging round him, he began to look for a cat that certainly wasn't there. Goodness me, he sounds a little bit crazy, doesn't he? I think mean, he's fishing with us guys. Puff, 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 he called. Puff, puff, puff. There's no cat in your house, shouted Moonface. Mouse? Did you see a mouse? said the man alarmed. I wouldn't like one of my mice to be caught by your cat. I tell you, we haven't got a cat, cried Joe, feeling quite cross. We've come to tell you about your friend, Mr. What's name. For once, the saucepan man seemed to hear Joe, and at once he stopped looking at the cat. Mr. What's his name? he cried. Where is he? He's a great friend of mine. Well, wouldn't you like to go and have tea with them? said Joe. Yes, certainly I would, said the saucepan man. Please tell me where he is. He's sitting on the ladder leading from the faraway tree to your land, shouted Joe. He's waiting there. Yes, for me, said Moonface. Shh, said Franny. The saucepan man gave a yell of joy when he heard where his old friend was, and he set off for the cliff, shouting in delight. Hurrah! I've come through the faraway tree, and I can see my friends again! And Mr. What's-His-Name is waiting for me to have tea with him! Come on! Come on! Up the cliff he went, treading on the saucepan steps, his own saucepans and kettles rattling and banging round him. The children and Moonface followed. The saucepan man, man ran helter skelter to the hole that led down to the topmost branch of the faraway tree, dropping a few saucepans on the way. When he got there, he peered down and saw Mr. What's name sitting on the ladder watching for Moonface. But the saucepan man didn't know that, of course. He thought that his friend was waiting for him. Hey, hey, hey! He yelled, dropping a saucepan on top of Mr. What's name in excitement. Hey, old friend! Mr. What's his name watched the saucepan bouncing at his foot down the branch of the faraway tree and wondered who it would hit. He looked up in amazement when he heard his friend shout, Saucepan! he yelled. Dear old saucepan, fancy seeing you! Glue? said the saucepan man, suddenly hearing wrong again. Glue? No, I've not got 
any glue with me, but I can soon make you some. Still the same old silly saucepan man, aren't you? cried Mr. What's his name. Come down here, I didn't say anything about glue. Come and have a cup of tea with me. The kettle's boiling. I don't want oiling, said the saucepan man, though he really sounded as if he did. He was so full of kind and passive. I'll come and have a tea and a talk with you. Hurrah! He put his foot on the ladder, but unfortunately, he stepped on a kettle that had got round his leg, and down he went. Clatter, bang, crash, smash, clang. Mr. Watts' name called to him as he went past, and down he went too, rolling off the ladder, down the branch, past Mr. Moon's door, and down the tree. There they go, said Moon, facing the light, all mixed up with kettles and saucepans. What a joke! They'll give old Dame Washlock a fright if they fall into her wash tub. The children laughed or they cried. The old saucer man was really so funny, and they couldn't imagine what people in the tree would think if he rolled down with such clanging and banging. It's quite safe to go now, said Joe, peering down the ladder. They disappear. I shouldn't wonder if they're at the bottom of the tree now. Come on, Moonface. So down the ladder they all went, till they found the topmost branch and opened the Moonface's door. Silky was there, looking scared out of her life. She gave a scream of joy when she saw them. Why are you looking so frightened? asked Moonface, giving her a hug. Oh goodness, a thunderbolt or something fell out of the sky just now, and we're all crashing down the tree, said Silky. Oh, I wonder who that was. That was only the saucepan man and Mr. Watts' name, said Joe laughing, and he told her the whole story. Silky laughed in her side face. She ran out the door and peeped down the tree. Look, she said, pointing. Can you see far down there between the branches? They all looked, and they saw Mr. Watts' name and the old saucepan man climbing painfully up the Mr. Watts' main home, both talking together at the top of their voices. They've forgotten all about us, said Joe joyfully. Now, for goodness sake, Moonface, don't go putting acorns into Mr. Watts' name's mouth again. Let's have some finny, and then you must go home down your slippery slip. So they all, so they all five sat round Moonface's funny room and ate some pot cakes that Silky fetched and drank acorn ale, which was made of acorn, and it was delicious. Then it was time for the children to go, and they chose cushions sat at the top of the big tree slide, pushed up and flew down the inside of the tree, sliding round and round and round, till they shot up out of the trap door at the bottom onto the cushion of moss. Then they ran home as fast as they could, for they were late. I expect the old saucepan man's gone back to his old little land by now, said Jo, as he turned in at their gate, but he hadn't. He came to see them the very next day, his saucepan clanging so loudly that Mother looked quite alarmed. Whoever in the world is that? she said as the saucepan man came down in the gate. Oh my goodness, I think that that has been my favourite chapter yet. That was so funny, I loved it. So, tomorrow we will be on chapter 15 and it is called The Saucepan Man Goes to the Wrong Land. So it sounds like we're going to have more giggles tomorrow when we hear about what the saucepan man gets up to. Okay, I will see you later. Enjoy this absolutely beautifully sunny day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.